Evolution is a selective process that means animals' genetics adapt over generations to better suit their environment. It's totally natural, unless you add humans into the mix. By building cities on top of natural habitats, polluting the land and oceans, and hunting, we're not just changing the landscape, we're changing the animals too. With that, let's take a look at some of the animals that have been forced to evolve because of humans. Vegans and animal rights activists, you might want to look away now. Tuskless Elephants Every day it's estimated that over 100 African elephants are killed by poachers for their ivory. Even now, this ivory is coveted by rich individuals as decorative pieces and useless mythical medicine, despite its trade being completely illegal. Its harvest usually means the elephant is killed or left tuskless in the wild, but the threat is prompting a horrendous natural selection within these herds. They're evolving to become tuskless. After the Civil War of Mozambique, almost 90% of the country's elephant population was culled for their valuable ivory. But elephants born with a rare mutation that prevent the growth of tusks avoid that fate. Researcher Josephine Smith found that the trait has been passed down to the next generation, promoting tusklessness within 32% of the remaining female population. Normally, this would only occur at about 2-4% of female African elephants. But this isn't an isolated incident. In South Africa, the effect was particularly extreme, with over 98% of female elephants in Edo National Park showing the new advantage of tusklessness. If poaching for ivory continues, we can expect tuskless elephants to become the new norm. Atlantic Cod Big fish or better fish? At least they are to our fishermen. Unfortunately, as catastrophic overfishing from commercial fleets targets bigger fish, they are now an incredible demand, but harder to find. It seems the only way to survive is to be smaller, which is exactly what Atlantic cod have begun to do. One of the most overfished species in the world, humans have coveted this delicious fish based on its size. A moratorium in 1992 saw the cod fishing business collapse along with the start of conservation efforts to protect the species, but the damage was already done. In three decades, it was observed that the size of Atlantic cod had decreased by about 20%. By only catching the biggest and best, it left the smaller of the species to breed. But to prevent being caught in their adult prime before they'd had a chance to breed, these fish were also forced to evolve a younger age of sexual maturity. Previously, the fish would reproduce at six years when it was physically larger, but now mating begins at five years. Increasing this maturity by over 16% means they have a better chance at producing offspring before being eaten. Guess I'll have the steak. Hybrid mice. If you have a large rodent problem spreading fleas and disease, the best solution is to lay down poison. Warfarin is a common favorite in this regard. It's tasteless and odorless, so the mouse won't suspect a thing. And it's been used since the 1950s, so it's got a good track record of taking care of the problem. That is, until recently, scientists found a hybrid mouse that has developed a specific resistance to the poison. It was discovered after a bakery in Germany called in a pest control expert who used bromodialone, a really hardcore version of warfarin, but the chemical had no effect on the mice. After an extensive investigation, it was found a German and an Algerian mouse had interbred to produce a very rare hybrid mouse, and unlike most hybrids, this one was capable of reproduction. The Algerian mouse had previously evolved immunity from a process called point mutation, but breeding with the German mouse gave the poison resistance to them in a process known as horizontal gene transfer, which is usually only seen in microbes. To quote Star Wars, If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. More like rodent Juan Kenobi. Tawny Owls Climate change is causing a rise in sea levels, weather anomalies, global warming, and color-changing owls. Wait, what? No, that's right. The owls are changing color. As humans continue to drive climate change to new terrifying heights, animals around the world are evolving to better cope with the new conditions they face. A good example of this are the tawny owls of Finland. There are two main variants split by plumage color brown or gray. Gray tawny owls are better camouflaged in the snow cover of Finland's forest, where the brown counterparts tend to stand out. With such a hefty advantage against prey, the gray variant used to thrive, making up over 70% of Finland's tawny owl population. But as winters got warmer and snow cover greatly decreased, 
brown plumage variants began dominating the species and now make up over 50% of the population. This forced evolution is an alarming warning that shows climate change won't just affect humans and is already affecting life as we see it. Turtle-headed sea snake. But tawny owls aren't the only ones changing color to deal with climate change. The turtle-headed sea snake of the Pacific Ocean used to be identifiable due to their unique white band markings over the length of their bodies. In recent years, scientists have observed the sea snake's distinctive bands disappearing, giving them a completely black appearance. After insisting that this wasn't just a goth phase, scientists dove a little deeper into why the change was occurring. The results took them aback. The investigation found snakes near the Pacific Ocean cities had higher levels of trace elements like arsenic and zinc in their systems. It's believed that the snakes are being forced to undergo an evolution tactic called industrial melanism in order to deal with the increased toxicity of their environment driven by pollution from the nearby cities of their habitats, the snakes are storing the toxins they ingest in their skin. Fortunately, they can shed this, minimizing the impact it has on their health. But other animals that have suffered the same impacts of industrial melanism, such as the peppered moth and Parisian pigeon, don't have this luxury. They're forced to store the toxins in their feathers and protective membranes, turning them black. Bed bugs. Ever gone to bed and woken up itching with red lumps all over your body? Likelihood is you have bed bugs. They're nasty little critters which feed exclusively on blood, like fleas or my ex-wife. They hide in beds, couches, clothing, anywhere soft and easy to conceal themselves, also a lot like my ex-wife. Usually you can treat an infestation with a good clean and a spray of common pesticides, unlike my ex-wife. That took lawyers. Lots and lots of lawyers. But if you live in New York, I have some bad news. Researchers at the University of Massachusetts found bed bugs in New York are 250 times more resistant to standard pesticides than bed bugs in Florida. This is because changes in a gene controlling resilience of the nerve cells means they generate higher levels of enzymes that cleanse them of poisons. Why? Because repeated application of incesticide acts as a form of natural selection so only the toughest, nastiest of the bed bugs survives to pass on its genetic material. We've made our bed, I guess we really do have to lie in it. Kodiak Bears Kodiak bears, sometimes called Alaskan brown bears, are the largest subset of the brown bear species. And aside from the polar bear, it's the largest bear on the planet. In comparison to its brown bear's cousins, which weigh up to 360 kilograms, Kodiak bears have been known to exceed weights of 680 kilograms. For perspective, that's as heavy as 100 bowling balls or a modern Mini Cooper, but it used to be much, much bigger. National Geographic correspondent Douglas Chadwick noticed in 1990 that the average size of the Kodiak had been declining year after year. But Kodiaks are native to only a few remote islands in Alaska, so what was causing their evolutionary disruption? Obviously, humans. Sorry and even more obviously, hunters. At the time, it was found hunters would pay $20,000 or more for private hunting guides. With inflation, that's equivalent to about $39,000 today. Paying that much money means hunters want the biggest trophy available, leaving smaller variants free to breed and pass on their tiny genes to the next generation. Sometimes size really is everything. Dogs. Dogs are probably the most well-known example of animals that have evolved as a direct result of human interference. They're a man's best friend, because we've literally bred them to be. Descendants of the now endangered gray wolves, they could once reach up to six feet long and weigh 120 pounds. Centuries of humans controlling elements of their breeding has given rise to their domesticity and specifically pronounced features, resulting in the vast variety of dog breeds we see today. Hundreds of years ago, most of these varieties had a specific purpose. Poodles were originally gun dogs, perfect for bringing in a kill as they had soft mouths. Dalmatians were bred for their stamina and would run in pairs alongside coaches in the 1700s as a sign of status. And bulldogs were bred to help butchers control their livestock back in 5th century England, which is where they got their name from. But these days, the reliance on dogs in the workforce has fallen, meaning their latest evolution serves fashion. 
French Bulldogs are a popular, cute snub-nosed breed, along with handbag dogs such as Chihuahuas and Pomeranians, bred specifically for their tiny size. The medical implications of this incredibly unnatural selection sees many snub-nosed breeds suffering from breathing problems, and small dogs suffer from teeth overcrowding, hypoglycemia, valvula disease, luxating patellas, shivering, and many more ailments. Dog may be a man's best friend, but man might not be a dog's best friend. Anoli Lizard Unlike dogs, not all animals take hundreds of years to evolve slowly to conditions humans have manufactured. Smaller species such as lizards and insects breed at an astonishingly fast rate, some with cycles as short as 25 days. This means genetic materials and learnings are passed down quicker in some species than in others. Take the Anoli lizard, for example. This tiny resident of Puerto Rico can fit 100 generations of adaptations within 30 to 40 years. And it's exactly what they've done. In adjusting to a world that's more concrete and glass than tree bark, the city-dwelling variant of the Anoli lizard has developed longer legs and greater adhesion on its toe pads, meaning it can speed across smoother surfaces in contrast to its forest-dwelling counterpart. Natural selection in action. City Birds Ever been in a bar with music playing real loud when you spot someone gorgeous across the room? You try and call them over, but all you get is a, what? Followed by instant rejection. Next time that happens, spare a thought for city birds. Species of birds that stay city-centric in parks and green spaces are constantly competing with the noise of traffic over the sound of their mating calls. But evolution has provided a solution, being loud. A study conducted in Rock Creek Park, Washington, D.C. found birds changed the way they sang when competing with the noise from the city. Birds sang in shorter bursts on a smaller bandwidth and with less variation in their frequencies. They've adapted by condensing their song and, like that one drunk friend at a karaoke night, really belting it out. More research in the area shows that when comparing city birds to ones raised in captivity and exposed to loud environments, the same effect didn't manifest. This means the effect can't be recreated in a lab, so this is a population-wide shift in reaction to a specific problem, also known as evolution. So which of these changes stunned you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.